welcome back to Beanie's Hobbies and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another printer and this one is the Flying Bear Ghost 5 Ooh. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, that's put me right off my stride. Um, wasn't really holding out much hopes for this. Um, it's kind of one of those sort of not that well known brands, shall we say. But I was actually pleasantly surprised at the quality of the prints. Um, and it's kind of been absolutely faultless, in all fairness. Um, so we'll start off with usual. Beanie's Hobby style, but we'll take a look at the prints first and then we'll take a little closer look around the machine. So we'll start off by taking a look at the prints first. So there we go. So first up, now keep in mind the quality of this print wasn't very good, but this was some free PLA that came with the printer. As a rule, I'll normally just chuck that stuff out because it's about as much use as an Astro and a motorbike. Um, but I actually used it, and I wish I hadn't because it, it didn't actually come out all that well. Um, but by no means I would say that this is a terrible print. It's just not the best print in the world. So this is obviously just a Mandalorian helmet, keychain. And then we printed off a gold bar of Beskar. You see that this print, these prints were kind of had a bit of a theme going on, and as you can see, that this came out incredibly well. And then went for something a little bit different. I decided to print off a whole chest set. <laughs> So this is obviously the board. Board was printed in two halves, so we've got the black half and then obviously the red half glued the pair together. So as you see here I haven't glued it together very well. So that's the board. And then printed in glow in the dark. PLA printed a couple of these boxes to hold the pieces in. Yes, I know it's white and you can't see what the print quality is like, but at the time it's kind of running a bit low on filament. And then we open it up inside and we have all the chess pieces. Now, I don't ask me what any of these are because I didn't know how to play chess. <laughs> But I do like Mandalorian, so I thought I would just print it for a bit of fun. And also we have another case exactly the same. And inside that we then have another set of chess pieces. All printed incredibly well. So that is it for the prints. So now we will take a look around the actual machine itself. Now on this machine we have got a print size of 
255 by 210 by 200. So it's not the biggest bill plate in the world. Um, plenty big enough for what I need though. Um, we have a glass bed, heated bed, also insulated bed. Now I'm just going to have to move the camera and take you guys off for a better view. Now we do... Okay, so the dog just had to bark at the wrong time, but he was actually notifying me that we just had another printer arrive. So, well done dog. <laughs> right, let's get back to this. Okay, so we have the guide rails up here for the actual print head itself. Now, when mine arrived, these rails were just completely dry. So, if you think about getting one of these machines, get yourself a little bit of uh, grease and just make sure you just lube up your rails then it'll make it lovely and smooth. Um, now, the other thing to note with this printer is, is a kit, so it does come completely disassembled, so you will need to assemble it all yourself. Um, there are some nice step-by-step -step instructions on uh, their website. It is very, very easy to assemble, it's not difficult. It took me no more than an hour to put this together, so that is just something to bear in mind. So moving on to the hot end here, we have a plastic hot end with a fan blowing directly onto the hot end itself. Now the hot end has got a silicon cover over it. Now like I was saying about the bed, we have a glass insulated heated bed. Single lead screw at the back on these two guide rails, which also required greasing. Now we do also have a Hang on, let me just double check. We do have a 3.5 inch color touch screen. So I'll just fire the printer up. All you can see is my reflection. That is quite a nice, easy to use touch screen. Oh there, the lighting is absolutely atrocious. There we go. So you've got your basic bog standard preheat. You've got your tools. Leveling is just obviously it will move the print head to the corners for you so you can adjust your level on each corner. Uh, there's no baby stepping while printing with this printer so you're going to need to get your corners level first before you start printing because there are, there's no adjustments to be made while the printer is running. Um, obviously we do have Wi-Fi built in as well. And obviously we can move, unload the filament, load the filament. Just, you know, there's even an emergency stop button if something goes horribly wrong. So just bog standard settings on this nice colourful touch screen. I know it's quite hard to see guys, but very, very simple and easy to use. Round to the side machine, we do have USB and we have a micro USB, micro, what am I about, a micro SD card slot on this side. Round on the other side, we obviously have our power switch, so we can select between 110 or 230 if you're over here in the UK. 110 for you guys overseas. Obviously at the back we have power switch, and we have power input. We have filament holder. And then over on the other side, we have got filament detection. And we do have a dual drive extruder, which is see-through so you can see your filament passing through. Now connection wise, just plugs in down in the back corner of the printer, all the wires come down, plug directly onto the board down in the back of the printer down here, so that's nice and easy to assemble. Rest of the wires are just zip tied and tidied up out of the, actual, out of the way. So nice compact machine, not massively heavy, we have got a metal frame, but we do have plastic side covers and back cover. So prints have come out really well. We've got a nice solid sturdy frame. Um, there is no baby stepping option on this machine, so you can't adjust it while it's printing. So, But leveling wise, it's not a very big build area, so easy enough to level. Um, I've had no issues with prints. Apart from when I was using 
janky free filament that came with the printer wouldn't bother using that stuff at all always make sure you're using decent quality um, filament don't you know buy cheap you get cheap results um, apart from that this printer has actually been working incredibly well Now, sort of price-wise, this is kind of on par with, I would say, the Creality Ender 3 V2, around that sort of price range. Um, most of these printers you're seeing at the moment I've picked up from AliExpress, and I kind of wait for a bit of a deal, or a bit of an offer to come along, and then I'll buy a few in, I'll then review them. I don't tend to keep all of my printers. I will keep a few, and then the rest will then get sort of sold on to fund other printers. So, you know, you guys are always asking me questions about printers. I don't always have them, but I'll always try and help. But at the moment, I've had this a while and I've actually kept it because it's actually quite a good machine. Um, I've just got the CR6 SE sitting here and an end of five as well. But a lot of machines, I've got a couple more down here on the floor. I'm in the process of moving, so I've got, yeah, I've got boxes of printers stacked up everywhere. So it's a bit of a nightmare at the moment. But once I'm up and running in a new workshop, we'll then be able to get everything out and go through it all properly. But back to this machine. Um, wait for it to come along on offer. And, you know, print quality wise is very, very, very good. I've not had no issues. Only one thing I've had to do is the hot end, or the actual nozzle that came on, comes with it, is a bit, well, it's a bit rubbish. Um, it didn't last very long. So I swapped that out for another hot end. Well, not for another hot end, for another nozzle, sorry. And had no problems since. So yeah, if you think about getting one of these guys, change your nozzle and don't forget to grease or lube up your guide rails or your runners. A bit of grease in the bearings, just grease it up and everything will run nice and smooth. So yeah, that's it guys for this sort of quick little review. I'm not going to go into massive great detail about this because it's probably going to be one of those printers that you look at but you never really get. But if you wanted to give it a go, over here at Beanie's Hobbies, I will give this one a thumbs up. Because um, like I say, there's, you can't, I, can't really fault, I can't fault it in any way, shape or form. Um, it is lacking in a few features. Like I said, there's no auto bed levelling or anything like that. There's no baby stepping. But... You know, it has got everything you need. It's very, very simple to level the corners. We have got big leveling nuts. We have got the upgraded larger heavy duty springs on the bed. Um, the bed is, there's no bed wobble at all whatsoever. Like on the end of five, when I originally had one of those, the bed wobble on that thing was absolutely atrocious. But this printer is solid. So yeah, no bed wobble. Um, very very good machine so that is going to be it for this machine quick little waffle it's all we need it's worth having a look at guys if you're looking for another printer and apart from that that's it for this one and i'll catch you all in the next one cheerio